Hello everybody and welcome to another 2D art session. Once again we're going to try out the monument slash slow fuse slash creature caster paints in 2D fashion on a piece of canvas board. It's nothing fancy. Just a just a little cheap old canvas board. Now the downside is this is another basically a memorial image of a dearly departed Pat, but on the plus side, you guys get to see another example of using the basically the same brushes, the same paint that we normally use, only this time in 2D. And I think you've seen on the previous 2D episode, I'm pretty sure we used one of these much larger brushes right here. This is the same as our number 8, except now we've got ourselves number 12, much larger. We've even got, I think I got myself a 10 over here. We might use that. Yep, that's a 10. Then to change my camera angles around, obviously to try and get this on here. For the most part, this is about the size I'm going to be. This is where I've got to hold it here. This is, we're going to see. Colors are fairly basic. There's some off-whites here. Got the ivories. We also needed some warmer tones, and that's going to come right here. We got dark umber, tan flesh, golden brown. Focus is going to have to change a lot because some of this will be getting closer up, especially on the face. Obviously, we have a lot of dark colors here. I thought that might be another interesting thing. That entire face, you know, just make this picture bigger here. So that whole face, you can see, we've got the the brown in the eyes. You've got almost a little bit of bluish gray on the fur because of the, the natural light that's coming in through the windows. And we've got this bright red. I think she used to wear a harness. Now, I don't know. Didn't get to see Oreo quite as much as Guinevere. That was the other portrait that we did. So this is just, I'm going to have to do my best replication of the picture here. You can see also there's reflected light. You can see the fur reflects the background. So that's going to happen in here. Now what I'm going to be doing a lot is playing around with my brightness and, and contrast. I'm going to turn down the brightness here a bit because, well, we got this white piece of canvas board staring back at us. So we're going to throw some paints out on the palette. And we're going to get started here. And guess what? It's a lot like the base shade of base coat. And we're going to be doing as much blocking in of all those darker tones as we can, then move to the mid-tones, move to refinement, just like we would on a miniature. So we'll be right back in a second. We've got ourselves some colors out on the palette. This is that coal black, the dark umber, light umber over here. This is the skin tone, the ochre, and I think that's the ivory Maybe called bright ivory. So what I'm gonna do is just sneak my water over here if I can. This way you can. Yeah, now you can see when I actually get in there to do stuff like this. And what are we doing? I'm gonna take a little bit of this. It's the light umber in here. See how that's? Look at how that's just kind of marbleized in there. Let's let's get at this here. And we're just gonna use this big old brush and we're even see I just I'm taking just some straight up water in here. And we're just gonna let this do some of its own thing. Like that. It's almost a watercolor type style, and that's what I enjoy about this the slow fuse slash monument paints is you can essentially work like it's watercolors now I might increase the color intensity here just a touch and see, I'm gonna even throw in a little bit of the ochre there and get back into some more of the basic skin tone We're just we're going right through the joint. Does not matter. It's not important. Like so, one thing, if you recall 
from that first episode that we noticed is that this paint tends to stay wet a little longer. So it's an advantage that we've got here. They're just working this down right here using more water. So instead of using a lighter color or whatever, something that's white, we can do that. But then you start to change the opacity. It's a little less like a watercolor and a little bit more like a oil slash acrylic approach there. Here, let's get some more of this. Again, that's the umber, the light umber. And using the flesh tone color here. And just I stuck this in the frame that I had gotten for it, so I know that I need to go basically wall to wall, corner to corner with the paint. So there you have it. So it's just a very quick, just sort of a watercolorish type effect. Now I can increase my brightness because we've gotten rid of the white. And what we'll do, you notice I'm not using the sponge or anything like that. Now let's see if we can't start to block in some shapes here. I grab a little bit of my browns. Now if I'm going to do this, with all of this stuff being wet, I have to be cognizant of that. And that means it's going to bleed a little bit. So I have to be prepared for that. And you can see, look, I'm holding the brush really relaxed here. Brush is on its side. And essentially, again, using this as a little bit of a wet into wet. You can see how I get some soft edges, too. This is also not, I don't want to go directly to the darkest color. That's why we only use just a little bit of black and let the umber mix in there. Let's see, look at how we can, we're already starting to do a little bit of a directional stroke type of an action here. See, we got the, the nose here. And then we've got some darks here. Some darks down here. And I think this was the, the spot on the back here, tail, and then this over here. And I can even then get into my skin, or the, uh, the skin tone color, but the color of the backdrop, I guess is what we want to say. Now, always have to keep in mind with this slow flu slow flues, slow fuse slash monument paints they they cover really well. That's definitely something to be aware of. It's always aware of it with the miniatures, but I can even see on a piece of canvas board that characteristic still holds now I think on the other. The other pet portrait that I did, a Gwen, I didn't have a drawing in advance. Well, did that because I just I knew the cat so much better. It's seen her so many times. Pet sitting here, yeah, not quite so familiar. Usually only saw or almost maybe one time a year tops. You can see we just we leave a little thing, a little, few little things behind, little indicators of where the eyes should be. Don't want to linger too long there. So this is the one time you're actually going to be seeing me clean the brush a little bit, I suppose. So now this is not so much about painting white. We're just here. Let's get a little bit of yellow in there and. This is still that blocking in phase, but you can see it only takes a matter of minutes before all of a sudden it starts to take on some shape. See here, even you let those mix together. 
this is the nifty thing is just being able to work wet into wet and that's what's going to happen right here so check this out this is in this area that's why I didn't try to mix up a gray paint because just knowing this stuff the working with it and see look at how we can get a nice hard edge here and take a little more of the but always trying to get a different a little different color in there this is where we can use a, a chisel edge. There you can see it against the black there. And even now I can start to think about, see that one little directional indicational stroke there? It just doesn't have to be brutally hard. It's I keep emphasizing that with the miniatures all the time. Like one of the reasons I try and do these exercises like this is to show how essentially easy it is in a 2D sense and then how that translates into a 3D sense. This gives you a little more glimpse into the, the mindset when I approach miniatures. So we're just, again, we're sort of painting what's not there right now at this point. I'm going to do this over here. You can see using the big brush, look at this, see how it gets so it gets even bigger here. See how I spread that out? It's a whole point of using this. But see what else it gives me? It gives me a soft edge. Giving me a soft edge. And that's it's important. See how this we can mix this together. We can get ourselves a nice little gray right here. So yeah, it doesn't take long before we start to say, oh, okay, yeah, I'm starting to see some personality here. We're going to take a little bit of the light umber and darken this down just a bit. Now it's it's the crazy trait of all of these types of dogs and, and this general breed where they tend to lick their paws. Uh, schnauzers, I saw it. To me they're all kind of the terrier type breed and when they have this long hair on their face and stuff it gets sort of stained by their own saliva. I know it sounds weird. It's just something I noticed. So see, even at this early stage, just starting to indicate a few lighter shapes now. Let's not forget about that red collar. We're going to get that in there, obviously, now, because this is all, we're blocking in all these shapes. I'm just going to throw a little bit down here. Don't need a ton. But we're not just going to leave that be red. We're going to mix it with some umber here. And good. That's on screen for you. And we're just going to sweep this down. Because we're going to start something that's a little more subdued. And we can always go brighter from there and sometimes you just you have to stray from your original reference because of things like composition or just to be able to indicate shape a little bit better now there's this there's the toy over here don't want to forget about that we change the position of it so that it was just more like it was being interacted with and once again, just keeping everything loose, keeping everything fast. I even let some of the original canvas texture show through. When back in the art school days, we used to actually we used to actually take palette knives and really put some serious texture on masonite and work that way. And that was always interesting. Sometimes we would take a heavy brush. It's like more of a house brush, house painting brush type of thing, and work back and forth. It would, it would create an interesting texture, but not quite as even of a grain as what you have here. So even here, yeah, I can start to incorporate a few more. Dark see that nice? Light touch. Light touch. 
still just looking to indicate some things. I'm not looking to... But what's interesting, boy, I wish you could... There's no way you can see what I'm doing because there's absolutely nowhere for a visual camera on me. What's pretty wild is that I'm not actually looking at the canvas. I'm actually just looking straight at the picture. I'm not even not even looking at the canvas. I just I kind of put my head down. Say, okay, I'm in the general vicinity of where I want to be. See, look at this. See that nice feathered brush stroke there. You've seen me use that plenty of times on miniatures. Well, that's the exact the whole same principle as what you got here. So here we're gonna again we're gonna do a nice lost edge over here. See, there's even some red that's gotten in there. Now I can see that there's there's some dark in here and I'm already look at this, the directional strokes. The fur just kind of emanates from sort of the center of the face outwards and that is what we're doing here. Just making this emanate straight out from the face. Here we're going to grab a little more of this So we can start to do some directional strokes here too. I need to I need to lock in where this side of the face is here. Now it, it may have to change. It all all depends. Nothing at this not, none of this is supposed to be finished, done, permanent. We're just finding our way through the image here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. In some ways my voice is still trying to recover from Adepticon. That was <clears throat> that was really brutal. That was not good for the voice. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Let's not forget this paw over there, but I don't want to make it overly bright either. And let's start to indicate a little more of this tail here. Just like with miniature painting, we're, we're avoiding the brightest brights and the deepest darks for right now, especially in these opening stages. But you can always dip back into... Yeah, so that was it was getting a little too light too fast, so we're gonna tone that down. No problem. And always I have plenty of the colors on hand. So if need be, <coughs> I can just go back in there and grab some more. Let's get some more. I think on that right here on the chest is some more light colors. And back here on the tail, same thing. More directional strokes out this way. We're gonna get we're gonna fill in some of this. Just needed a Need to be filled out a little more. And I know there was a dog portrait that I'd done was it, a few years back, and I had to shift where the eye was pretty dramatically to make it look, to make it go where it was actually supposed to go. Almost dead to move it almost like a half an inch. I think you can see, or even now, just can see the indication of fur. We're not drawing in every single hair, but with some key directional strokes can certainly give it the impression. I can use my finger just like I do all the time with miniatures. I, I, almost none of this outside of the fact that we're working on a smaller surface none of this should be surprising in any way shape or form because you've kind of seen it all before it's this is just a different type of miniature we're working on right now 
I'm gonna get this gray in here, and sometimes I have to warm it up some, like so. So even this giant brush can still do this chisel edge action. So I'm just right here. I want to say, okay, is this where the eyes need to be? Now, okay, I only have a little bit of the, I have to put some of that skin tone back out there. But you can, I could go back in here. You know, and, and this is where I can alter the shape again by painting. Space, it's called negative painting, essentially. Because you're painting what's not there as opposed to what is there. And here, let's say I wanted to throw in a touch more contrast. There we can. Here, let's get a little... Let's get even a little darker here. So we're just we're creating some more. I grab a touch of red here. So let's get a little. We're looking for some shadow in this area. Doesn't have to be a lot. And see, it just it starts to instead of getting lighter somewhere else, we make something else a little darker. You can do that here too. Along. Yeah, good, you can see that. Just right along here. Toy's also going to need a shadow. Yeah, just I think that's about enough right there. I can even take my fingers and fade out the edge and See, look how I'm using the side of this brush. Same kind of scumbling action you've seen me use before. And I can still do some watercolor type things like that. Still use my hand. Get in here and do that. Oh, if it gets too light, I always have some paint here where I can just tone it down. And the idea is here, I don't want a lot of focus on that. That's in the background. So I just, I just sort of, any hard edges, I just either blend those out or just minimize them. Look at how the, the brush here, I can, even even now, just, what, 20 minutes into this, we're already able to really indicate some nifty fur. It's going to go right over this section right here that's a little bit darker, just right over that. All it takes, and I'll make sure that we've got... I think this guy needs to get cut in a little bit more. So I'm going to use, well, <laughs> in some ways it's just going to be me talking to myself because I am trying to, it is a portrait, so we're trying to match as closely as we can what it is we see in the reference. And, of course, I'm blocked half the time because there's five different lights pointed in every which direction. This is, this is another reason. You know, you've heard me talking about wanting to get the, the larger setup so that I can do bigger things. Well, this is certainly a larger thing. This is definitely something I'd like to be able to do a little bit easier. And, of course, the, the camera is going to shake a little bit because of, again, a little vigorous application of brush strokes here. Let's take some lighter red here. I 
And we'll work with what's there. Like that, we're gonna let that be toned down on this side. It is supposed to be in shadow after all. And then Yeah, not necessarily interested in getting a any kind of a highlight on this yet, but I do want to indicate right here on this side. It's slightly lighter there. Basically just took a little bit of that yellow ochre and lightened the red that way. I didn't want it to turn pink. So we've got that pretty well set up. Our toy, we're going to get some of this lighter red on that too. And the, t oh, the top actually is a is black there. Little red antenna on the top there, just to indicate that. I'm going to go back into... So what I will do, since the bear, how, how's that? We'll just make them essentially one to one in size. And we're going to, all we're trying to do now is work out placement of the eyes. Okay, we've got. Just want to make sure that they're not too far apart, not too close together. And go back in here with some darks. Also trying to get this where you can see it. We definitely need some dark right here. Want some here. I'm going to want some down here. And hopefully this just starts to kind of come alive right before your eyes. And yes, I realize the, the palette camera is hidden a bit. All I did was just reach for a little more of the umber and the black. Yeah, I, I could use my number eight rounds at this point. But I thought this would be an interesting, interesting little lesson for you to see how I can work with even larger, even larger brushes. Now, also, too, I've got a there's a little bit of a fight where the paint that's wetter is, is putting a little bit of a shine on things. Uh, yeah, we'll just I'm gonna fake this by grabbing some of that red color and we'll just make our own little semi flesh tone out of this. And I'm gonna take away some of the ear. Like so. gonna get a little bit of a lighter tone in here just kind of where the muzzle and the beard is here and again making uh, my own little version of that flesh tone there And just trying to reshape the the head a little bit like that and look at my shadow down here so 
So that's pretty, pretty much establishing where general shapes are going to be. So what we'll do is we'll get some fresh colors back out in the palette. Where we've kind of used up a few of them. And now, basically, the, the rest of the journey, there's no specific steps. It, it's now going to be a matter of refinement. We will work more in the, the mid-tones, too. So we'll just, well, we'll say we're going to be working on mid-tones, even though we're kind of working everywhere all at once on our, on our dog here. So we've put some more paint out on the palette. We've got ourselves a number eight round. This one's a little more beat up, not quite so pristine, but it's gonna do the trick as we try and work. Work a little bit more on the eyes here. It's obviously gonna be the most important thing. It's in any portrait, it's the most important thing. But what we're gonna try and do is get that really pretty well established here. So we've got mostly dark up there. There's there's not a lot of I'm just I'm used to lighter faces with a lighter with a darker outline around the eyes. And it's gonna be very it's very different, that's for sure. Definitely gonna be different. I'm gonna try and impart some blues here also in these darks. But I think you can see what's happening. We're, we're still working in those directional strokes, even though it will mostly disappear. Eh, not completely, but definitely will. It won't be quite as pronounced. So this is definitely a lot of dark right here. And you can see how they all, all the strokes emanate from that same, same area. And obviously the more feathered the brush stroke is, the softer the edge is going to be. Now we're in a constant state of balancing a hard edge versus a soft edge. See here we can just, like this, here we're just going to fill this in. We're going to grab a little bit of this umber right here. Now we sharpened up that edge along where the eye falls. And this is what I mean. That whole notion of, of refinement instead of straight off the bat, just boom. Trying to draw out the, the pupil of the eye right away. No, that's, we don't want to be doing that. We want to get in here and establish all of the all of these core shapes and values. So once again, this is darker around here. Yeah, that needs to be darker right up to the nose. And these are the things that you just start to notice. See, and we're gonna soften this edge just a tiny bit as we move the nose down. I'm going to move this up slightly. Again, these are those in-flight in changes, in-flight course corrections, whatever you want to call them. Now if I grab a little bit of my ivory here, this starts to take on a little bit more of a cooler gray color. Just trying to indicate one of these nostrils right here. This is where I'm trying to work in a little bit of gray in the eyes. Gonna work away some of that upper 
lid there. And see, this is how we can so how we can soften some of those edges back here. That's a bit of a hard, bit of a hard edge. And just like when we're doing miniatures, we don't get bogged down in one area. Yeah, the face is really important, obviously, but we can't just abandon all the other areas too. We have to keep thinking of the whole thing together. This is where we can manage the size and shape of that harness. Let's get right in here into some of these, some of the hairs here on the face. And I always want to make sure that there is an expression on the face. That obviously any any face can have an expression on it. See what we did there? Just assisting this this shape of the forehead here in the top of the head. But just a few not very not terribly light brush strokes whatsoever. Not a lot of light colors here. Let's see with this with this brush now. And just indicate a few of the ears. And we need to do a similar thing right here. Again, I gotta wanna make sure that we can see at least that one nostril there. Now, uh, get some of this umber in here, and let's see. We're gonna try and get some of these darker hairs here over the top. I, I basically put all the mid tone in place, and then we're gonna drag these over the top, like so. And it's interesting, I'm looking at that, the image, and this shows it being dark. I'm actually going to have to move, move the eye up again. I'm actually you know, <coughs> moving them up and making them smaller at the same time. So I think I've subtracted about a sixteenth of an inch from each one. And I also have, I got the ivory back out there, but I also have a little bit of straight up white. Because at this point here, save for things like the tail, and watch what happens. It's just, we're indicating a few things. We're not, again, painting in every single hair. Now take this, see him? my hand is, is relaxed here. And we're just going to indicate these right over the top of what's there. We're not painting this in solid. You see how we let that, that stuff show through underneath? That's just what gives it that extra bit of depth and, tra and transparency, too, because the fur is really not, it's not this solid, impenetrable mass, especially when it's white fur. You can really see through it. Here, you know, let's get some of that cleaned out of there. Gonna, gonna go back to the ivory here. We're gonna try and get this f kind of curly flourish on the tail here. Now my hand might get in the way at times here, but hey, that's how it goes. Just that little fluffy tail. 
Let's see what we've got going on here on the chest. And then all of a sudden, all of the stuff that we've done previous, see, we can just we can play off of that. Just these light indications of texture, fur. You can see how the, the fur essentially parts down your, your fore, the foreleg here. It's almost the same thing that's going on on the tail, except now it's, it's also on the paws. And we're going to indicate, yeah, right there. We are going to, I'm going to get a little bit of the ochre touch of the that skin color in there. And right here in this area, just trying to determine which the heck way that fur is going. I think it parts this way. And then, yeah, then it's going to go out this way. So again, I apologize if the camera shakes. Not much I can do about that. Here we are. Going to do the back foot there. And we'll indicate don't want to get too bright too quick with the eyes, but I do want to indicate this here. Because it's, it's such a critical thing. So we got those two right there. See how that? This starts to look more like reflected light, or there's a little bit of transparency in the eyes there. up this way. Now there will probably be some things that I just have to do off camera, not necessarily in the magnifier, but just to make this work, I've actually got, let, let's put it this way, what looks straight to you, to me, is like this. So <laughs> that is not super helpful when you're trying to make something that's a portrait look like something. So I'm going to have to go back in kind of after the fact and probably make some more adjustments. And you'll, you'll see it in some of the final pictures and such. We're just working our way through here. And just by having, by virtue of these couple of hard edges makes all the difference as far as contrast goes. That hard versus soft edge, it's, you hear me all the time talking about the different types of contrast and yeah, light versus dark and opposing colors, saturated versus unsaturated. I think definitely one that goes mostly unnoticed unless people are wanting to do say something like not object source, well, even, even object source lighting, but something like a non-metallic metal. That's when all of a sudden edges get talked about a lot. Now, edges should be talked about much, all the time. Because edge control, that's, that's a big thing. That can really make a difference between something being three-dimensional and something just, well, being almost three-dimensional. See, we're doing just a few of these you know, loose hairs, like that one there. These are the sort of things that we can start to get into when when you reach this stage. Not calling it an end stage, but we're certainly farther along. We're we're not in the beginning stage anymore. So this ear sort of folds over the top of this. We need to indicate that. And I see what I couldn't quite see before. Here, we're going to get a little touch of grayish brown right here. 
and and some indication yeah uh, and just as I look at the reference that's that's what I'm seeing once again we're gonna you know, so I'm gonna try and pull some of those few lighter colors in there here let's let's work on these hairs right here all right let's get ourselves a couple of lights in there Now I'm, I'm going to maybe enhance some of the lights on the nose, maybe somewhat more than there actually are on there. Those are the things you got to do. It happens with miniatures too, where you say, well, you know, just the way this miniature is, if I want people to understand what the heck it is, I'm going to have to make this adjustment to it. And it's with your miniature now. It, it's a different story because you're not trying to necessarily match the, a portrait of something. However, what if it's a miniature where either the buyer, whatever, says, "Okay, it's got to look like this," and now all of a sudden it is definitely your job to match something as closely as possible. All right, let's. See if we can't now get some secondary lights. So it makes it say a little more liquid, I guess, is what we're looking for. And we'll continue to maybe emphasize that shape there we've got. Some fur going in here. Now there's, as you can see, there's plenty of darks, so we don't have to. It's nice that we don't have to keep going darker. Now we can start to throw in some of these these lighter tones here. We did all that work, sort of in advance. Now here, let's say that is not showing up quite as much as I want. I can go back in here once again and sort of paint the negative space. We're also going to do some indications of some kind of shape out here. Not shy about using my finger whatsoever to manipulate the paint. I'm going to get myself a few darks here. I think we've got some claw action here. Don't want to make that too too dark, but good enough. We'll actually throw out a little bit of red here. Just It's very simple. Now, one of the reasons why the red doesn't stand out too much is because all that skin tone that we used early on. All right, just enough of the ochre. And I'm just I'm trying to get this one spot right here. So see how we see how we're fading that. Let that fade away. We're going to do another. It's not a solid mass of highlights, actually. Even that is getting to be too. It's getting to be too light. So we've changed that around. And we're going to even here get a little touch of reflected light on that. just a little bit because uh, otherwise it's again just gonna be a big old solid mass and we don't want that ok 
Okay, let's get some brighter red on the little toy here. We'll, we'll pop some green on that too. But not a lot. Just we try not to take away any interest away from our from the main event here. Once again, gonna get ourselves a lighter color. So now we have more travel. This was just a dark thing with a lighter hoop on it, and I think we've got that got that looking like it's got some more shape in it. And I try not to do too much of a highlight there. I just need to need to make that shape a little more connected. That's all. And I'm going to see if I can't incorporate some pink up here into the end of the face. And I'm going to do that here by the eyes. It's it's not gonna register as pink whatsoever. That's just a little a little bit. Maybe even up here on some of the highlights. And we'll grab some brighter red for that toy and I think what I'll do is in the basically the final details phase of it essentially maybe I will grab a little bit of a little bit of green and mess with that and then we can indicate a little bit of a something more with the toy now this is almost straight up I don't want to go straight up, but I still want to get a little bit of that ivory in there. And what I'm looking to do is, is see right here, where you've got the, it's very clear, that part right there. I'll just indicate a few more things of fur there. And do the same thing on the top of this paw, especially. What that does it makes this come forward just a tad. Just a bit. And so we're not gonna go any more back aisle. I think I need to just trying to adjust the, this there's a little notch that should be here that wasn't quite there now it is Let's just give that a few indications of lighter color And I've got, actually, there's another reason I'm doing this. And that's more just came in the mail yesterday from Dark Sword Miniatures. They've got a whole huge line of just dog miniatures. They're not fantasy. Well, they have the, the critter kin type things. That These are essentially just very realistic dog breeds. And I thought if you see this, because we did the cat, but, but oh, if, you, if I do this dog here, then you'll be able to really get that direct comparison between the two and see how I approached it in, in 2D form. And then when I start painting the miniatures, I also have some, some Song of Ice and Fire stuff. Like, I got a bunch of these. I think there's, what, Summer, Grey Wind, Ghost. So... That's another reason is I'm gonna be starting to do some of those, and I just I like to I like to give you to lead into things, 
I guess it's because when I did 2D art, I always did series of paintings instead of just isolated ones. So if I do a, if I have a few of these 2D pet things, and then I start going into the 3D versions of them, you just you, you have a little more of a window into what the mindset is. Because one of the keys, I suppose this is for you folks that want to do miniature painting classes and, and that sort of thing. And teaching is, teaching you is very less to do with the how as opposed to the why. Well, I, I spent many years in art school watching really talented painters stand in front of us and paint a picture say virtually nothing except for something brutally obvious like yeah we can see you're doing that why the heck are you doing that and unless you say what the why is you're not necessarily helping why use this the larger brushes why do some of the scumbling in some places not in other why are you taking your finger and, and wiping the paint instead of just maybe doing it wet in the wet? Sometimes it's just a matter of convenience. It could be it could be that minimal. Just well, I was being lazy, and it was just easier to do it this way. Or just I had it on the brush at the time, had it on my mind at the time, so that's why I did it. But still better. If I actually tell you, once again, that whole purpose, why? See, this, and what I need to do is actually knock down some of this, make the eyes a little less wide open. Now we're back into that sort of middle brownish gray now this is where I, I just almost have to make some assumptions about things now I, I suppose I could go into the picture and see okay is there change the brightness contrast on it I suppose I could have done that well I still can it's just not going to be on screen in front of you because I can't control now well, let's see what what happens. Yep, it's only going to change. Oh, look at that. Here we're going to put that about mm, there, and we're going to do this. So you can see, even in black and white, there's still plenty of shape. Bring up our color intensity again. So what I'm going to do is just get some green on the palette here maybe do a few little adjustments off screen where I can actually make things bigger and see things a little bit easier then we'll do our final details we've got some green out on the palette so what we're gonna do is grab a chunk of that I know you can't see it well let's see see if we can't Shift our palette camera around here a little bit so you can see that without it cutting off the yeah yeah uh, we're gonna move it down here I think no matter what there's still gonna be some stuff in the way but we've got to get ourselves this little stripe right here just mix a little bit of the ochre with it. We've got these little circle doodads right here. And that's about it, except for maybe add a touch of yellow and off-white to it. You can, that's added a look a little more of the yellow. So it, it almost sort of mingles in with the carpet. Now what is it we say with the miniatures all the time? You put a color somewhere, it's got to go everywhere. So we're going to figure out somewhere to put this. 
And where am I going to put? I'm going to throw it here on the eyes. And I've already seen, i got to actually make a little, there's a few adjustments that I want to make. So here is one of them. So the gray is, or green is going to be used as sort of a gray. So I actually have to push that highlight down a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this green here. We're going to use that as a gray. It's, it's still there. It's, it's still that same color, but here... Nobody's going to say, oh, you put green there on the nose and around the muzzle. No, they're just going to say, oh, you've got some kind of gray there. And this is this is the way you fudge things. Oh, we're even going to put some by the tail here. It's, none of this is going to register as being greenish in the least. We're even going to put some here. So again, we've made this brownish, greenish gray. It's another reason I wanted to have the palette out there for you to see. Because we're also going to... I'm going to put the green right next to the red there. Because we've got it somewhere. We've got to put that somewhere else. I also see, I think there was some spots on the leg. We're just going to indicate that here slightly. There's also some more dark here that needs to be indicated. Now the, the toy itself, yeah. I think we're going to do a, a little bit of this. Yeah. Just like that. And then we'll sort of fizzle out that edge a touch. going to use more brown than black right here and just boom one little indication here some kind of shade I just I don't want to focus on that too much so now these eyes have just an extra touch of sparkle here because we just we threw in that little bit of green a little touch of green there it's you can see even here on the palette it's just a barely even looks green and it certainly doesn't look green once it's on our canvas but still it, it's one one little extra difference one little extra color variation I always talk about color surprises with the miniatures well Throwing a little bit of green on the dog for is certainly a color surprise. So here we're going to do some there. Then, all right, yeah, we're going to go in here just like this. I need to get in a little more yellow here, not just lights but also some a little more towards the yellow side and then even in here too colors you would not really think of as being in dark yellow and green uh, that's crazy talk what's all that going on well uh, when you step back and even just look at the photo a lot of these surrounding colors are represented in that fur. Here, let's make this a touch on the lighter side. See, I'm grabbing a little bit of water right there. And all I want to do ah, is have a few things just pop up like this. It, it's, it happens on the haunches. You look at, especially, you know, wolves or whatever. Certain parts, you get that crazy thing where you're almost looking straight down at the fur and it, and it sort of just emanates out almost like a fur explosion, kind of at every angle. And I just have to, at this point, then you, you can become your own worst enemy by trying to do a little more here and a little more there. 
and as we always say the enemy of good is better in fact they are mortal opponents of each other always trying to take each other down we will indicate some more darks here I see I need that but see how we're it's, it's not a dry brush there's plenty of paint on this brush but because the brush stroke is lighter because that brush stroke is a little bit lighter we get ourselves what looks like yeah, something nice and faded Might even just hear that color. Is that even through a little bit of a? I mean, how crazy is that to use green as a highlight on there, on a red color, a bright red color? I used it there. I'm going to use it over here. So once again, I hope that this has been fun for you. Well. Well, let's see if we can't throw this on here too. I don't get to do this very often. That is something I used to do a lot. Don't get to do it very much at all, which is why I want to try and do a little bit more of that here. There we go. So a few more indications of fur here. I know this is not the longest video in the world and <laughs> the dog painting videos they aren't going to be super long either because they're not real big dogs but this is consider this your introductory lesson into painting various dog breeds uh, don't ask me what breed Oreo was because I don't know. I'm fairly. I had to be some kind of mix of something. And yep, that's gonna that's gonna do it for there. So thanks again for watching. All the folks that support me on Patreon thing, I appreciate that a lot. I always try to have something something new and different for you, just not the normal thing that you would see. Cause maybe that's just cause I'm not normal. Yeah, well, we know that. But I will catch you again on the next time around, and maybe we'll do some dark sword doggies.